Okay, so I had to make this video. Now, I just want to point out now a caveat. This is my opinion. This is my observations. And this is just done from what I can find online. Basically, my own extensive research. And I kind of wanted to talk about something in terms of like these kind of sites and why I don't like them and why I think everybody should immediately approach these kind of sites with red flags in mind. Now, what kind of site am I talking about? So you see here, there's a post. It was done by a, con a creator who I am not gonna share their name just because I don't want them involved in this video, but it regards an, uh, a business called Packpool. And I'm like, I've never heard of this business. Let me go see what they do. And then I read, read this part. Packpool is an online mystery pack service where you can win digitally and ship physically. And I'm like, there ain't no way. There ain't no way this account who's always talking about being for the community is posting about this uh, store and immediately thought of BoxGG. Now, if anybody has never been familiar with BoxGG, they're an account who is constantly posting about their mystery pool boxes where you buy coins or you buy gems or whatever they call them and you spend the win. Now, I want to point out something that if you look here, you always see like the same accounts hitting the low odds. Archduke Kong and Loco Pools are constantly hitting these apparently low, low pool rate cards back to back consistently. The chat is always the same few people and the chat never includes any of these people hitting the low odds. Like Pokey King 724 for example, just apparently hit this uh, Roaring Moon and we don't see him there. And then you're seeing Archduke Kong hit a 6%, a 4%, an 8%. So unless they're clicking super fast and spending these things in like two seconds each, uh, this doesn't seem legit to me. I'm just going to be honest. And this kind of adds into the idea of how legit is this company? Because we see here, you see that they post their pool rates. And their pool rates are not terrible if you were really interested in the gambling and I like that there's a transparency here but one of the issues that comes with their pool rates is the fact that like uh, seven out of ten spins is going to be guaranteed that Dratini pretty much 71 percent hit rate for something that costs 132 gems now I want to make it clear I have no idea what 132 gems is for this uh for this business I have no idea where 132 gems equates to money wise if i was to equate it to like 10 gems equals one cent um maybe that is the case considering as 13 gems is what they're crediting dratini for and that's like a one cent card uh but it's hard to say it's hard to say exactly what they're valuing at but it shows that 92 percent of your spins will be something worth a, or less than what you spend or no 82 percent and then one will be about what you spend with the 10 percent for the flygon v and that's the gym value i cannot find what the gems cost on this website what's your minimal spend what's your maximum spend anything like that i've dug around this website and i looked here and gems are site credit like v bucks you could buy them with credit cards or crypto but I, there's nothing in here that tells me how many I can uh, get. But I do know an exchange rate. 550 gems is equal to uh, $5.50 USD. So that tells me that one gem equals one cent. Now, I don't know what the minimum gems you can buy is or what the maximum gems you can buy is. But that shows me that this box we're looking at cost $1.32 USD to spend once with a good chance that you're going to get a Dratini common from, I believe this is Evolving Skies, but I may be wrong on what set this is. Um, I don't, actually, it might not be Evolving Skies. That might be Silver Tempest. But you're going to get a common Dratini most likely. Now, there's something else that I want to point out about this company that kind of red flagged me is a lot of the content, you see no comments. And you barely see any, any engagements in terms of likes. And the reason why you don't see many comments because most of the comments that get put on these posts get deleted. And I've seen this before where there was comments where people were saying, I did not receive my cards. It's been six months. 
And if you go to this businesses, actual business pages on like the Better Business Bureau website and stuff, you have comments where people say they never got their prizes. They never got their cards that they requested for them to be shipped, never got them shipped. And you see comments like that all the time. Facebook is filled with them too. Another thing that's common is you have like the same like three or four creators. This girl is one of the more used ones who's constantly hitting these big hits and they're showing her hitting these big hits. But that brings me to my idea of what these sites like to do with their partner creators. They like to make sure that their partner creators have it rigged to where they're always hitting on streams or on uh, videos that they're making. So that way it can end up showing off like, for example, this Pikachu being hit by this creator. That way it shows off on their website like, hey, you got a good chance of hitting this. But realistically, even if you were to hit it and even if they were to ship it, your chances of hitting any of these big orange cards is less than like 2% combined. Honestly, if I added this together, it feels like it would be less than 1%. So one out of 100 spins will give you one of these cards. And then there's something I want to point out, a caveat with the site. Is it saying that they may not have the item for withdrawal if you end up pulling it? That they may just exchange it for something of equal value. So let's say you were spending this and you really wanted this Rayquaza VMAX. They may not even have the Rayquaza VMAX in stock and may just give you uh, something of equal value in their eyes. Which is totally a sham. If you're spinning to particularly win one of these cards, you should have that in stock automatically. And that's one of the problems I think with this site that a lot of criticism I've seen online has had. Is that the site doesn't have the stuff in stock and they usually have to order it after it's hit and send it to the buyers and it creates a lot of problems and this site has been this way for a while where you don't see a lot of comments on their post any comments that get posted that is uh criticizing them is immediately like deleted and you don't find that comment anymore you like you could just see post after post after post no comments like not a single post besides maybe the content creators that are posting on there. And that was the site I immediately thought Packpool was referring to. But then I clicked on their website and it brought me to some information where it's a completely different site. Now the same, the same coin variants, and I gotta admit the one thing I'll give them over BoxGG is they got really good graphics. The graphics on their site look good. But I was looking so, at something, right? Guaranteed profit, earn points once a day by pulling this pack. So this is a login bonus pack. You got your one in three odds to pull something over 500 points. And then the best on Lola is also a one in three odds to pull something over 500 points. Now take in mind, one pack is 500 points. You spin it for one card. One pack is 500 points. You spin it for one card. And I'm going to get to the ratios of these packs in just a moment. Starting off with the EVs pack. Now, a pack full of all of your favorite Evolution VMAXs. Your S tiers, which I'm going to point out now, if they don't have a times three or times something above them, it immediately indicates to me that they only have one copy of this card available in the packs. There's 7,500 packs to buy. One Moonbryon, one Umbreon V, one Sylveon, one Leafeon. Your A tier prizes, two shiny Evolutions, an EV, um, IR, a Leafeon V, so you got nine evolutions in the A tier, four alternate arts in the S tier. And then you got um, two guaranteed prizes at 2,400, uh, well, at 5,000 packs, and then at 2,500 packs. And then in your final packs, you got an EVGX. So you got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 16 total big hits out of 7,500 packs. 16 total big hits out of 7,500 packs. Now, give or take, it's $3 to spend one of these packs. So what are you more likely to win than one of these big prizes? What is your chance to pull something that is not one of these big prizes? Well, let's look at B tier. Prizes will be randomly selected from a vast list of cards. These are some examples of what you can pull. Now think about this. They're putting the best possible cards that you can pull from this pack on here. Because if it's just a random double rare or ultra rare, they're going to put or display the cards that would desire the people to spend this pack the most, right? Not a single one of these cards is over $3 market value. Not a single one of these cards is $3 market value. Dragonite EX is like $1. Flygon V is less than $2. Double V is a dollar. Giacomo is like $1.50. Greedent V is less than $2. Heatran VMAX is about a dollar. 
Lipard's about a dollar. Vika Volt's about two dollars. Wo Chien is under two dollars. So my assumption is if you're guaranteeing that people are going to win their points back after a certain number of hits, they're attributing 300 points to these low value cards. That means that they're putting a higher value in their coins than what these cards are worth. Instead of making it a $3 plus card for 300 points, it is less than $3. And then your C price, common and uncommons. It says rares to hollow rares, yet they're showing nothing but commons and uncommons. So maybe you get a rare or hollow rare, but even then, in today's age, hollow rares are like five cents. There's not a single hollow rare in Scarlet and Violet that is more than a dollar. There is not a single hollow rare that's even valuable. Like even playable Monkey Dory is like less than a quarter for a copy. So the thing that I noticed is while you have your prizes here and here, there is no ratios for B or C tier. Like you just got to assume how many of C tiers are going to be in these spins. How many times am I going to uh, spend $3 to spin and win a card worth five cents? I don't get that indicator. How many times am I going to spin and win a card that's worth $2? We can judge just by the quantity shown here how often you can spin and win one of the big prizes, which to be honest is probably less than a like 0.5% chance. But there is no indicator here that shows us that we can win a certain number of these prizes based on our spins, a certain number of these prizes based on our spins. We got no ratios for these items. Then if you scroll down, you do got these, but they have put an they put an indicator that makes me kind of just question: Is this even true? This will based on our system, where there might be another user who pulls it at the exact same time as you, and if they're right before you, they get it. Like, okay, so that tells me that it is potentially possible, and I'm not saying this company does this, but it's potentially possible that they skip pack five thousand, and that they skip pack twenty five hundred, and that they skip the last pack. And none of those packs ever win. A company could absolutely do that if they're doing this odds and then saying that if you spin on that pack, if somebody does it before you, then they win it first. Like what? Like I get it, but at the same time, it just seems kind of shady, right? Conditions may vary. So you're not even guaranteed a near mint card. So for example, they really wanted to be scummy. This could be a damaged version of Umbreon VMAX because they're not guaranteeing that you're even getting near mint cards for your conditions. Best of the Lola pack. This is the one I want to delve down into more. So you got 15 potential hits out of 1,000 packs. Your three biggest hits being Lily from Ultra Prism, Lusamine from Ultra Prism, and then the Lily alternate art. And then you got a Lily here, which is actually pretty valuable, but not as valuable as the Lilies we see above. And then you got a couple of other interesting cards like Decidurai and Incineroar, Marshadow, Primarina, Mimikyu, uh, Guzma and Hala, and Ultra Necrozma. Two of these cards are pretty big, Lily and the Ultra Necrozma. Everything else is just kind of mid in terms of like what you would want to win out of a thousand packs. And then once again, your B and C tiers. A little bit better than the previous pack, but take in mind, this is a $5 per spin pack now. You can win a double Ultra Rare. Now, I want to point out something. This right here, their B tier also says double and ultra rares, but they're highlighting full arts and they're highlighting like V maxes and EXs that are terrestrialized and full art Vs and full art EXs. You go here, they're highlighting one full art, which is a very low end full art. I think this card's like 50 cents. And then a bunch of bulk Vs, Rotom V, Luxray V, Wobbuffet V, all cards that are undesirable. And this is your C tier. $5 to spin and you're most likely going to win a 50 cents card. Now you can move up to B tier. And while we look at B tier initially, a lot of these cards are pretty, right? These are pretty nice cards. But remember what this said. One in three chance to win 500, uh, win a prize worth over 500. Now I'll point out a tweet later by what they do with the over 500. But I want to point out that most likely these cards are under your five dollar market price because schoolgirl is only uh 344 market pidgey is only 415 market necrozma full art is only 382 market slow king ex is only 243 market price 
Box of Disaster, which is a very interesting choice to even put on there, is one ninety nine. Paul Mott, Q57, and then Dodrio, 359. So that tells me that even your uh, your most valuable cards that you would have are the cards that you consider desirable are all under $5. Every single one of these cards sitting under that $5. But you're probably going to attribute 500 points to these cards just because if you're... If your people want to cash out and they're value, if you're valuing this at 500 points for their cash out, that means you got five dollars for a three dollar card. Much, much worse than what we even see with Box GG. But the best I can say is at least there's no indication that this site doesn't ship their stuff, right? There's no indication that this site is untrustworthy, right? The indication with the site is that we can trust this site. And my biggest flaw with the site is more so the chances or the odds that you pull anything worth that $5. Most of these prices, most of the market value for these cards is well under that price tag. And it's terrible. It's rough. Like you're going to pull 985 of the cards are going to be under $5 out of the 1,000. And sure, if I equated this to a mystery pack, well, yeah, maybe... Maybe just maybe, right? That the big prizes are like the big prizes make up for that loss. But if we really look at the prices of these 15 big prizes that they have, including these gold cards down here, the 450 profit that they're making per each of these cards and the two to three dollar profits they'll be making off of this, you multiply that by $985, they're making thousands upon thousands of dollars just for the chances at a few of these prizes that they're not even guaranteeing will be near mint. Because remember, condition, uh, card conditions may vary. The last uh, pack I want to look at is another one that's a $1 spin. 5,000 packs are available. 3, 000, uh, 1,017 have been sold. Now, be mindful that you can win one of the ETBs here, or you can win either five mini tins, five of the go mini tens are one of these ETBs here. Now, assuming that they're not saying that you win three DC TBs, but there are three prizes available. That's 22, 26 prizes without any guaranteed pack prizes, meaning like at 1000 packs or at the last pack, you don't win anything. So that means you have 20, uh, what was it? 26 available prizes out of 5,000 packs. Everything else out of here is worth under a dollar. You can either win a common or an uncommon, or you can win a bulk V or a bulk EX. Darmanitan, go lurk. So your dollar spin is very unlikely to win you something over a dollar. Now, if you do win the 151 ETB or the Crown Zenith ETB, congratulations to you. I'm going to assume that these are the Pokemon Center ETBs and they won't be misleading because that can lead to legal trouble. But... It's like your chances of winning these are so slim and the odds are is you're going to get something not worth it. They're probably going to attribute 110 points to one of these Vs and what will most likely happen is you'll spend $3 and if you get the one in three chance as the other packs have shown, you're going to get two commons and then you're going to get a bulk V. Is that worth $3 of your money? Because you can spend on TCG player one dollar and get the same three cards you would win gambling here for your chance to win this now once again we don't know the ratios we also don't have any clar uh, clarification on social media if this is even true if people are actually winning these prizes because they have an, a stipulation for creating an account that we can't find any disinformation i can only find giveaway winners from this uh company no no prizes whatsoever Here's your purchase options. Now you see here, you go anywhere from your minimum buy-in of five all the way to 5,000, uh, which is literally a um, a gambling site's cost, in my opinion. Like, ain't nobody but a gambling addict spending $5,000 on a site like this. But I want to point out something. Shipping limited to the United States. So that would mean that you would immediately think, hey, maybe this company is located in the United States. Maybe they're a local company. If we look at where this company is located, they are actually located in Japan. This company is located in Japan. 
Um, and they don't ship to Japan. From my knowledge, from what their website tells me, they only ship to the United States. Residents outside of the country will not uh, be able to ship prizes as of now. So that leads me to the question, why can't this company ship to Japan? They're located in Japan. They're local to Japan. What prevents them from shipping to Japan? Why are they strictly only shipping to the United States? That's just a red flag and a question I have that I don't think can be answered, right? I'm not sure how you would answer this question. So I it just brought it to mind. Another thing that I want to point out, and this is kind of scummy, uh, pro, uh, points will automatically be removed from your account after 120 days of purchase or exchange. Make sure to use up all your points. So in other words, if you have points on your account, you're forced to use them within a few months. If you do not use them after I think 120 days, it'll be about four months time frame. They will just remove the points from your account. The stuff you paid money for will be removed if you don't play the game in four months. That is just a huge indicator and a huge red flag that they're really trying to get people to get addicted to gambling on the site. Because if you're not uh, using your points after a few months, hey, we're just going to remove them from your account. Like, why would you do that? People are spending money. There's no reason you can't keep them on your account. There is nothing that tells me that you should be deleting information or, or uh, currency off of anybody's account, right? Imagine the flack Fortnite we get if they deleted everybody's V-Bucks off their accounts if they didn't play in four months, right? It would be the same crap here. Don't delete people's stuff. I read the terms of service, and there's a couple of red flags here. Uh, the biggest red flag would be um, that they can suspend you for any reason, pretty much. If they feel like... Uh, you did anything to violate their terms of use, they can suspend you, which is totally fine. But there is something in here that I kind of noticed and uh, they can change or terminate their content of their service at any time and users can't object to it. So in other words, they have it in their terms of service that at any point in time, they could just completely change their business model. They can completely change their site. They can completely remove their site and nobody can do anything. Same with, um, there's in here somewhere, and I forgot where, but they say that they're allowed to suspend their service if anything's needed. But there's no indicator that you will pause the time frame for their points immediately being removed after 120 days if you do suspend your service. Like, does the, the day is can, still count if you suspend for four months? There's no indicator of that. But here's the changes of service. We may change the content or specifications of the service and whole or in part without prior no, uh, knowledge or public announcement to users. So in other words, they can completely change the business model. They can completely change everything without telling anybody who uses the service. And I think that is a very, very big red flag for any of these businesses where they could just absolutely rug pull on uh, everybody, not ship out the remaining prizes, not allow anybody else to use their points. And there's nothing anybody can do. On top of that, there is uh, a lot of problems here in terms of like, things that are being said because one of the things I've kind of noticed is this company is located in Japan. They're operating out of Japan, but their customer base is in the U.S. So how do you enforce a lot of these laws? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of red flags and a lot of questions that any consumer should be asking when using a site like this. Lastly, YouTube content. Uh, this video is entirely fair use, so I'm not worried about anything of them worrying about me complying with their terms of service um, because I'm not worried about this company. I'm not going to be using them at all. Now, I want to point out something here. In order to keep everything fair, we uh, cannot disclose the prizes that have been won already. So in other words, at if they shipped out that Moonbrion, they will not disclose it, which I think is kind of fair. If you're doing a mystery product, you as a company don't want to disclose, hey, our biggest price has been pulled before they're all sold out. So I kind of understand that. But the odds of winning each prize is random. This is something that I don't like, though. Please refrain, uh, frame, uh, refrain from posting your prizes on social media until the last plaque has completely been pulled. So in other words, they're asking users and their, and their terms of service, remember, they can be suspended if they violate this. They're asking users to not post anything on social media about what they pull until all the pack is done. So this pack can be a complete scam with no memory on it, and nobody will know until every spin has been done, every pack has been opened, right? 
Um, then it tells you where the prizes have been uh, going. Uh, this is another thing. Going back to the points being automatically removed from your account after 120 days. If you don't claim your cards in two weeks, uh, they will immediately convert them to points even if you wanted that card. Let's say you were trying to build up and just do one massive shipment instead of doing smaller shipments. Or let's say, and I'll get to a tweet later, you're waiting to meet their point threshold for them to ship your prizes. After two weeks, that card turns to points, which is completely unfair. If you want that card, you should be able, you should have that card standing in your account. And if you want that card, if you want that card exchanged into points, you should be able to do that. And there should be no two weeks will convert your card immediately to points. Because in other words, you just told them that instead of getting their prize, they have to gamble more. And that is completely unfair. Lastly, shipment of products. They will ship within three weeks after your shipping request is completed. That tells me that it's most likely the case that they probably don't have these cards on hand and they probably order the prices as they go, similar to how that other company does theirs. Now, that may not be the case and it may just take them forever to process orders, but three weeks is a long time if you already have the cards on hand. It takes no more than a few minutes to pack up anybody's order and you should not be taking that long to ship an order. Um, once again, we see that they have their selling uh, price at one point equals one cent. And we see that they are located in Japan. Now, the way it works is you deposit your money, you open your pack, and then you ship or redeem. Now, I want to point out everything I could find on Twitter regarding this company and why this company is such a big red flag to me right now. First and foremost, if we look at a partner streamer, B-Boy, B-Boy uh, did a stream. I don't know entirely how his pool rates were on the stream. I don't care to go watch the VOD, so if B-Boy did well, then it's suspicious if he didn't do well, then he just clearly showed that the site's not as profitable as somebody might believe it is just from looking at the, uh, the post on social media. This guy says that he pulled 18, only got two hits out of a one in five win rate. Um, and then he said that he opened up, he spent $1 per spin, 16 were worth 30 cents and two were worth 110. So if we calculate that, and let's just use uh, this right here. So 16 times 0.3. That means he spent 18 pools. So he spent $18. He won 480 in bulk. And then he won 220 more in hits. And I use air quotes for hits. That means he won $7 worth of cards and $18 worth of spins. Um, yeah, so it's pretty bad. And then even then, I think he says he got six more pulls and did two more hits. So 24 pulls with four hits. So if we say that, if he got 20 times three is six plus 440 in hits, that means you ended up with literally, what, $10 in hits after $24 spent. That's why I don't like it. Another thing that he points is uh, that you can't ship out anything if your points are if your hits are valued at one thousand or uh, until your points uh, until your hits are valued at one thousand or above. I don't like that. Char he says that charging shipping should be an option, and B Boy agreed here that you should be able to pay shipping for any cards that are under that value, especially considering that this Pika pack, right? It costed him twenty four dollars to get a thousand worth of uh, cards. 1,000 points worth of cards, 1,040 if you calculated everything together. Now, be mindful that that 1,040, he probably didn't want to keep any of the 30-cent cards, right? So those 30-cent cards, he probably cashed in for gems. That means he probably had 440 in points. He has two weeks to get any more points above that to do anything about it. And I don't see anybody being able to do that logistically in two weeks when it costs a dollar a spin and you're getting a hit every like four or five packs worth $1 or 110 coins. Like it's just wild to me. And it's, it literally entices unregulated gambling. One of the reasons why I believe that this, uh, uh, this company works strictly out of the U S in terms of customers, but turns around and operates out of Japan is because it is gambling. B boy violated their terms of service by uh, posting his first, cash in on the site. Apparently he wanted Team Rocket's handiwork. Beautiful card, by the way. I don't think it's a highly, highly desirable trainer, but it is beautiful. Whether or not this is worth 
worth how much he spent on spins. I don't know. Once again, I'm not watching the stream. Then he got somebody who posted that they got a giveaway prize from them. It looks like the Mewtwo EX Gold. Somebody else said that they won a Magikarp and Waylord GX. Somebody else said that they won an Evolving Skies ETB. Somebody else said they won these packs here as well as a Butterfree. Somebody else said they won Altaria GX. Lastly, somebody said that they love what Packpool's doing. And it's a Mew V. Now, from what I can tell, everybody who posted looks to be a legitimate account. Like, there's nobody here. Like, some people follow me. So there's nobody here that screams, hey, we're a... Uh, we're a suspicious bot account that is claiming fake giveaway prizes. So one of the things that I got to say is I do feel like this company does do their giveaways right. They are giving away their products. So I'm not criticizing their giveaways at all. What I'm criticizing is the business model itself. Because this company is making mass profits off of unregulated gambling. And at the point in time, at any point in time, they could be scamming. I'm not saying that they are. This is just what we've seen historically with these types of sites, these types of sites love to scam their customers. And one of the companies that is kind of doing that, at least from the comments that have been deleted in the past is box GG, where it is believed that box GG is faking a lot of their hits and is um, not shipping out prizes to customers, whether or not those customers eventually receive their prizes. We don't know because they never follow up with the comments saying, Hey, I finally received my prize. They usually just comment, hey, it's been six months, I don't get my prize, and then the comment disappears off the social media post indicated with us looking at Twitter. So BoxGG is a site that is absolutely untrustworthy in my opinion, but at the same time, it's also in regulated gambling. So even if they were doing everything else by the book, even if they were all shipping prizes, it's still unregulated gambling. It is still enticing people to gamble. And considering that your lowest buy-in is $5 and every increment above that buy-in is 5 10, 30, 50. So you got a low option and then you got a mid option and then immediately it jumps into higher options. There's no 15 option. There's no 20 option. So either you're making a multiple five and tens or you're buying the bigger options, which is wild to me why the bigger options even exist. Because when you think about like any other like company that does like, like their own digital currency, when you buy more, you usually get bonus points or bonus coins to use. And it's wild to me that they have like a $50 option, but they're like not plus 500 bonus points. Like you would think that they would at least have bonus points if you're spending that much money. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's kind of a red flag to me. Like uh, these kind of businesses are just massive red flags because at best they're unregulated gambling that is making massive profits on like basically slot style gambling where the chances of winning are so damn low that you're probably better off just saving up and buying the card you want to win outright, but it entices gambling. On top of that, they do some shady tactics like requiring so many wins or so many points for you to even claim your prizes, uh, forcing you to lose your currency if you haven't used it in so long. And those are just like red flags to me that saying, hey, we need you to keep playing on this site in order to use your stuff in order to claim your prizes instead of just being able to claim outright. I wouldn't be able to spend $5 on this site and then just be able to claim my winnings. I'd have to spend more than that to claim my winnings because it's very unlikely with how many uh, packs there are that I can use this site and claim my prizes. You know what I mean? Very, 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 very unlikely that I'm spending $5 and getting my stuff. I would probably have to spend 20 plus to be able to get anything from this site and I'm probably not going to get more than $10 worth of value when I spend that 20 something dollars uh, bare minimum. And now I'm pretty sure that'd be the same way for Box GG, although I don't know what their minimum buy-in is. Um, but I will say that at least their packs have um, more of a ratio here where you're seeing you're guaranteed, like, I'm not going to say your guaranteed ratios, but your ratios for like these bigger cards. But at the same time, another thing that's interesting about this pack is there's no pack limits versus the packs here on this site where it tells you how many are remaining. So that leads me to believe that maybe this site actually has their packs built and actually has the cards on hand versus this site where a lot of people claim that they don't even have the cards on hand and they actually have a site disclaimer that kind of indicates that may be true. Now, once again, this is all just speculation and all my opinion, just observing these sites. None of this 
is based on, I'm going to say, factual evidence. This is just my speculation, my observations, and why I would tell others not to use a site like this. Once again, this video is fair use, so uh, anybody have any problems with it, uh, tough shit, because I did nothing wrong. Uh, more importantly, if you want to use these businesses, if you feel that you want to use them, go right ahead. It is all free. It is your money. But once again, I do think these businesses do nothing but harm the community. I think they're bad for the community, and I think they should not exist, and that's just a personal opinion of mine. And we can agree to disagree if you disagree, uh, but... With that being said, that is it for today's video. I just kind of wanted to talk about these things. All right. Bye.